Morning everyone, it's Dr. Mitchell here. I've got another interesting case to share with you. It's raining outside, thank God, I love the rain. It's very uh, peace bringing and serene. Uh, but this is another positive ANA consult, one of my favorite type of consults. I've had these persistently elevated ANAs. I've got these symptoms that have been going on for six plus weeks. What does it all mean? And to make this one a little bit more interesting, she also had positive anti-SCL or topoisomerase antibodies. Young, sweet gal, nurse, very bright. How does the story unfold? It unfolds like so. She goes to the ER two years ago. Uh, blue fingers, very painful. And she's told one of the most ridiculous things that I have ever heard, which was that your fingers are blue because your genes stain them. So I paused and stared blankly when I heard that because, well, we were both very flabbergasted and we were kind of laughing about the whole thing, but this is kind of typical with the ER, particularly with complex health issues. They can't figure it out. Their function is to make sure that you're not going to die anytime soon. And they did do a good, good job there, but really, Raynaud's that they believed uh, was actually staining of genes. So. After this, she goes back to her PCP. She tells her PCP what's going on. Her PCP orders an ANA and SCL70 antibodies. Thank you, Miss PCP, for doing that because that helped direct my questioning. And they were both positive. ANA was low positive. What else was going on? I'm going to share the picture with you before we get into the rheumatology consult that was precipitated. Okay? And so she has chronic fatigue, she has fever, she has night sweats, she has small joint inflammatory arthritis, swelling, redness, morning stiffness. Uh, she has the Raynaud's, which, which we described. And so whenever I hear anything that smacks of Raynaud's, like blue fingers, I show patients a chart, a little diagram of the triphasic response in Raynaud's. And so your fingers will go from white to blue to red with cold exposure or stress. Sometimes it just goes white to blue, sometimes it just goes white to red. But she looked at it uh, and confirmed that Raynaud's was present. <clears throat> gallbladder removal when she was really young. I pointed to the wrong side there. That's your pancreas. Gallbladder's over here. <clears throat> gallbladder remover, removal when she was really young. And what's interesting about that is uh, a long line of women on her mom's side of the family also had their gallbladder removed when they were young. And many of them had autoimmune disease. Irritable bowel syndrome. Okay possibly related to the cholecystectomy, but long-standing. Um, the Raynaud's, again, I mentioned, and I'm drawing a blank here, sulfa sensitivity. She also had a sulfa sensitivity. Not a specific criterion for any particular autoimmune disease, but when I hear or am thinking autoimmune disease or rheumatism, I always ask about a sulfa sensitivity. Many patients with rheumatism will have a sulfa sensitivity. Raynaud's, rheumatoid arthritis, um, lupus, Hashimoto's, psoriasis, you name it. Don't ask me why it's there, but it's there. And maybe it should be a specific criterion for autoimmune disease, but it isn't. Uh, multiple uh, joint injuries, particularly in her lower extremities that were out of proportion to the insult. A lot of weird stuff. Oh, also GERD. Don't let me forget that because that's part of what we'll describe later. So a, a lot of vague symptoms that don't fit into a specific box. But so anyway, the PCP refers her to a rheumatologist. She tells the rheumatologist what's going on. Rheumatologist reorders the ANA, the anti-SCL70 slash topoisomerase antibodies, and a bunch of other antibodies. Also does a chest x-ray. Chest x-ray is clear. ANA persists. SCL70 is positive the first time. Rheumatologist orders it again. It goes negative. So apparently the rheumatologist ignored everything that the patient told her or wasn't too interested or I don't know what the story is, but essentially told the patient, there's nothing going on with you. I'm going to give you some higher dose and said for your joint pains, you'll be okay. Don't worry. So the patient didn't like that, nor did the patient's grandmother. Grandmother found me, sent her granddaughter over to me. I looked at her. I heard the story. I said, I don't agree with your rheumatologist. Something is brewing, something is stewing here, and we need to do something about it. I'm looking at her labs that I just got back now, 
of erythrocyte sedimentation rate normal, CRP of 11.9. So in the naturopathic world, we freak out if your CRP is 2. Uh, it's debatable as to whether we should do that or not, but a CRP of 12 in a 28-year-old is pretty significant. Ferritin, 329, elevated probably on the basis of inflammation. Vitamin D, 19. Doesn't mean she's deficient in vitamin D. Your vitamin D will be low when something inflammatory is going on. I also like to check anti-mitochondrial and anti-smooth muscle antibodies whenever I hear anything going on with the liver or the gallbladder. Hepatobiliary diseases, this long line of uh, gallbladder removal and autoimmune disease uh, in her family made me think that that should be checked. Fortunately, they were negative. Her scleroderma antibody came back positive for the third time and uh, her urine was clear. So something's going on here, something's brewing and stewing. She's got all these symptoms that have persisted, persistently elevated ANAs. I'm gonna call the SCL70 topoisomerase antibody positive at this point. What did I tell her? I don't agree with your rheumatologist. Your rheumatologist is wrong. Her treatment is wrong. You have something brewing and stewing. This is very similar to a case that I described to you a couple weeks ago which was actually scleroderma related as well. And so there's a little bit of crest feature to this young gal's presentation as well. Raynaud's, maybe the GERD's related. Um, she doesn't have telangiectasia, sclerodactyly or anything like that, small joint arthritis. And so what I called this at this point, what I said the diagnosis is, is undifferentiated connective tissue disease, UCTD. I know what aisle of the grocery store you're in. I don't know where on the shelf you go. This is not wearing a specific hat yet. There's some crest features here. We don't call it crest anymore, by the way, but just for uh, simplicity. Maybe this will evolve into something specific like that later, but we don't wanna find out. We wanna do something now because it's more difficult to treat you when the disease has decided to wear a hat and things become more entrenched and are nameable. And some patients don't like that. They don't like having, <clears throat> not having a specific label, but there is a label. It's autoimmune disease. And autoimmune disease is complicated, and you have to understand that. And sometimes, as far as we can go, is something undifferentiated, something vague. But we can do something about it. So what are we doing about it? She's getting an elimination diet. She's getting naltrexone naltrexone. She's getting a homeopathic remedy. We will very likely treat her gut because it sounds like she has irritable bowel syndrome and many of you know about the connection between the microbiome, leaky gut, and autoimmune disease. And we now have rheumatologists using terms like leaky gut. Greg Silverman out of NYU who does a lot of research in the context of lupus. Leaky gut is a thing and it's finally reaching conventional medicine and MDs, DOs are recognizing it and acting on it. Okay, if, that, if this doesn't work, we might add hydroxychloroquine, which we discussed. Hydroxychloroquine, Plaquenil, there's plenty of evidence showing that it can minimally slow down and possibly halt the progression of the disease so that it doesn't wear a specific hat. Okay, so she, was, she felt very vindicated. Again, she's a nurse. She did a lot of research. She, she told herself this wasn't right, and she was right in saying that her rheumatologist's opinion was not right. So, unfortunately, a lot of the times in rheumatology, you got to get multiple opinions. There's a saying the rheumatologist has here, if God was a rheumatologist, you'd seek a second opinion. Anyway, this is Dr. Mitchell signing off. Don't settle for lackluster medicine. In many cases, there's something brewing and stewing that's ignored. Don't settle for that. Uh, what song is this? Billy Idol, Eyes Without a Face. It's also raining. It's very nice out. This is Dr. Mitchell signing off. We'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye now.